right so we will be starting the discussion on this topic diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis which is also known by the name of dish having one more name a synonym to it that is called as forestier's disease so hello everyone i am dr tushar mehta and i will be discussing this very interesting topic the first thing that we all should know about this topic is that it is having slight presentation which is more towards the elderly age group that is 6th to 7th decade of life with slight male preponderance so technically elderly males the keyword that we get from here is elderly males are more commonly involved now what technically occurs in this problem is that there is a bony proliferation at the sites of tendinous and ligamentous insertion of spine so we can conclude that mainly axial skeleton is involved so the keyword that we understand here is axial skeleton and in axial skeleton obviously spine is a common site to be involved now what happens there is that we will discuss in our next slide this is one picture that i want your complete focus upon in which you can very clearly see that in this cut there is a free flowing florid ossification along the entire anterior longitudinal ligament and as we have discussed mainly involving spine now whether it can be there in cervical or it can be there in thoracic spine but the classical hallmark feature is the free flowing florid ossification along entire anterior longitudinal ligament there is a diagnostic criteria to it that this ossification should be along the anterior or right antero lateral aspect of at least you have to understand a very important term here at least four vertebrae four contiguous continuous vertebrae have to have this florid ossification along its anterior or right antero lateral aspect as you can see here one very interesting distinguishing feature is that this space is usually preserved so this flowing ossification along all mainly involving skeleton that to axial that to spine that to cervical and thoracic in four contiguous vertebrae along anterior and anterolateral aspect is the classical x-ray presentation i would want you to focus upon this one more x-ray here there's nothing discreet in this x-ray there's nothing special in this x-ray it's the same thing that we have discussed in that uh, mri cut is this discreet flowing florid ossification along the anterior longitudinal ligament so just wanted you to have a look on the similar kind of an x-ray once more i hope you remember that in definition i mentioned a term that bone formation along the insertion of ligaments and tendons now here i would want that we should go back to our basics and understand this word called enthesis what is enthesis this is the site of attachment or insertion of a tendon or a ligament onto a bone i have used this image here to have a visual impression of the same thing that this particular part of the bone or this particular part of the bone where a tendon or ligament is going to get inserted this is what is called as enthesis now inflammation of this area is what is called as enthesitis but somehow in the literature in the historical aspect of this condition they don't use the word enthesitis as much as they use the word enthesopathy so enthesitis and enthesopathy are two interrelated terms and they can be used in exchange for each other bottom line remains the same that there has to be an inflammation of those sites of insertion of tendon and ligament onto that part of the bone you can call it enthesitis you can call it enthesopathy but one very interesting feature is that you will observe enthesopathy of iliac crust of ischial tuberosity and even the greater trochanter and this is classical in dish 
let's try to have a visual impression of the same with the help of this x-ray you all can imagine that this is an x-ray of the pelvis in the AP view and I'll use a white marker to point out certain things you can see the bony irregularities along the inferior pubic rami and uh, this is very classical of uh, the enthesopathy or the enthesitis along the still tuberosity and you can see a similar kind of irregularity along the li crust so all the all the findings that we have discussed again you can see here the irregularity the sclerosis the fuzziness the uh, haziness of the shadow of the bone around the greater trochanter so this is a very good x-ray of the pelvis showing you a typical enthesopathy or enthesitis which is associated with this condition called as dish uh, as we have already understood that elderly males are usually in world so how do they present they usually present with the stiffness of the spine that's usually the first presentation now many people when they look at this x-ray they look at other features they start thinking of a very common terminology of a common disease that is usually there in young people and that is what is called as ankylosing spondylitis now i'm sure you all must be aware of that that in ankylosing spondylitis there is a classical sacroiliitis and you have to understand this and keep that in your mind that no sacroiliitis at all in this condition even if uh, normally in ang spond why do we call it ang spond because there is ankylosis of the spine with inflammation this is another differentiating feature in this condition dish that first of all spinal ankylosis usually doesn't happen and even if it happens it is usually incomplete so these are two very important classical hallmark differentiating points of enclosing spondylitis and dish uh, to be honest there is no particular treatment it's just supportive that is in the form of non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs I have seen some of the students getting confused that the moment they read this flowing ossification of anterior longitudinal ligament they start confusing it with a candle wax spine or a flowing candle wax spine and they start mentioning I know flowing candle wax spine is a terminology a radiological terminology that people use for dish but you know what this is something which is more classical for our next topic which is going to start with this x-ray can you all appreciate this discrete periosteal cortical thickening of the lower end of the femur yes this is in the AP view and this is basically the lateral view you can also see these are the undulated ridges of the bone in the distal end of the femur extending almost up to the subarticular area of the bone this is what is called as molten candle wax appearance or a flowing candle wax appearance and you know what this is classical of our next topic that is what is called as Larry's disease or what we know by the name of Millerostosis first of all let's try to understand what this condition is all about this condition is all about Milo Milo basically means limb what do you mean by Rio Rio basically means flowing so there is a flowing bone that too in a limb that too a long limb that too a long bone and that is what this condition is all about not very common certainly rare mesenchymal dysplasia with sclerosing bone appearance that I have already shown you is called as dripping wax or a flowing candle wax appearance at the same time I would like you to remind of the previous condition that we discussed and I hope you remember that we took a keyword from that condition that elderly males are usually usually involved but in this condition this can happen even in late adolescence as well as early adulthood so definitely elderly males are not classically involved and you know what in younger age group this is more of an incidental diagnosis people don't have any symptoms they are usually asymptomatic it's just because that the x-ray is done for any other purpose and the clinician gets to know or the physician gets to know that there is some problem in the bone and then they uh, conclude that yes this is an incidental diagnosis if it is diagnosed in an adult that is usually presenting with pain and joint contracture because of the sclerosis of the bone in and around the joint now some salient features about Miller or uh, Larry's disease which 
are very important for all of us to remember that it can be monoostrotic, it can be polyostrotic. I'm sure you're aware of the word mono and polyostrotic, single and multiple bone involvement. In clinical practice, we have seen more of monoostrotic cases. Long bones are more commonly involved. This is another classical difference from the previous condition that we discussed that was mainly in the axial skeleton, that was mainly in the spine. This condition is more commonly seen in the long bones and that too particularly, even if short bones are involved, they are usually hand and feet with sparing of the classical sparing of the axial skeleton. There is one more systemic association and that is the cutaneous changes that you see with this condition that might be certain sclerodermic changes in the form of pigmentation or overlying fibrosis. So that also takes you towards the conclusion of this particular disorder. Now I would show you another x-ray, rather it's the same x-ray that we have discussed and now you can clearly make out that what is the periosteal cortical thickening. So this is that periosteal cortical thickening which is characteristic of this disorder and then you see the thick undulated ridges of the bone which are simulating like a, ca a candle wax is melting out or it is flowing down so this is something which is a hallmark feature of this particular condition there is another i would not say a common but a relatively uncommon presentation of this particular disorder that sometimes it presents as a mineralized periarticular that is around the joint mass. This is again something which is to do with another disorder that we see in our clinical practice called as myositis ossificans. I hope all of you are aware of it. This is something that you usually read in relation to a topic called as supracondylar fracture humerus in children. So just like in that particular case, here also you are going to see this mineralized periarticular mass around the hip joint. This is a rare presentation as I've already mentioned, but yes, the candle wax disease, flowing candle wax disease can present in this way as well. Talking about the treatment, ideally conservative treatment is not going to be of any use surgical treatment is done we are basically aiming during surgeries to release the contractures and the deformities because of these uh, the flowing candle waxes uh, tendon releases and osteotomies are done as in when a particular joint is involved or the periarticular area is involved uh, in the history if you go towards the historical aspect of this topic people have even mentioned amputation as a part of the treatment but we try to salvage the limb as best as possible so the keywords that we have understood are dish is in elderly males this is something that is seen in late adolescence or early adulthood dish is something which is having a stiffness of the spine mainly axial skeleton is involved larry's disease is more of a disorder of the appendicular skeleton that to particularly the long bones and then we saw the differences that how we have flowing candle wax, uh, flowing uh, ossification of ALL in dish and how we have got this flowing candle wax in long bones and Larry's disease and of course enthesitis is also a very important feature of dish. So I just hope that this video gives you an insight about these two relatively uncommon disorders of orthopedics and I will be coming up with more videos in this particular series soon. Thank you so much. All the best to all of you. My best wishes to